How can one even begin to describe Akira Kurosawa? From being a painter to a trailblazing storyteller, this Japanese filmmaker here, even after his death, is widely recognized as one of the most influential, bold, and dynamic movie makers in the history of cinema. Kurosawa, who debuted as a director during the Second World War, took very less time to cement his reputation as one of the most significant young Japanese filmmakers. In fact, most of his admired work boasted some of his highest critical acclaim. A recipient to many awards, one of which happens to be the Academy Award for Lifetime Achievement. In today's video, we will be exploring 25 of his best movies. Then you do not have to be a fan of Kurosawa to like this list. You're bound to anyway. Well, without wasting further time, let us dive right into the video. But before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Seven Samurai 1954. It was in December 1952 that Kurosawa took the screenwriters that he had for his 1952 drama flick titled Ikiru for 45 days at this isolated residence at an inn with the sole purpose of making them come up with a screenplay for Seven Samurai. Well, it goes without saying that Shinobu Hashimoto and Hideo Oguni did a fantastic job. In terms of the storyline, the events of this epic samurai drama movie are set around 1586 during the final phase of the Sengoku period in Japanese history, especially when Emperor Ogimachi and his Chancellor Toyotomi Hideyoshi were in power. As for the basic storyline, there's this poor farming village that has its desperate farmers seeking the aid of a ronin, or in simple words, a masterless samurai to defend the village against an impending attack by bandits who have plans to steal the crops of the village. Kurosawa's Seven Samurai to date remains a classic with an irrefutably gratifying and thrilling storyline. This landmark the movie here not only boasts a massive cast of veterans, but it also has compelling characters, visceral action, and meticulously detailed to say the least. In fact, this was the film that literally defined modern-day action movie conventions of epic fight sequences, featuring one of the most climatic battle scenes of all times. No wonder Seven Samurai continues to remain the most celebrated samurai flick to have ever been. Red, 1985. Ran categorically happens to be one of Kurosawa's lesser-known movies as compared to his landmark ones like Seven Samurai. But hey, that did not stop this movie from becoming the filmmaker's most personal passion project. In fact, it was the international success of Kurosawa's 1980 Jedi Geki film titled Kagemusha that drove the talented filmmaker to go ahead with Ran. Backed by a screenplay by Hideo Ugoni, Masato Ide, and Kurosawa himself, Ran was partly based on Shakespeare's King Lear and had on display an aging Sengoku period warlord who makes up his mind to give up his monarchical authority in favor of his three sons. Just like the foolish King Lear, the elderly warlord makes the mistake of banishing his most loyal son and presenting the imperial power to his corrupted, deceitful sons who in due course thrust the entire kingdom into war. Visually speaking, Ran in all probability happens to be Kurosawa's most good-looking project. It was also the only movie that had Kurosawa deservingly received a Best Director nomination at the Oscars. There's a significant usage of color throughout the film and special mention to Toru Takemitsu with that distinctive musical score. Also, as the filmmaker's last epic, Ran has often been referred to as one of Kurosawa's was finest achievements. High and Low, 1963. Kurosawa based this police procedural crime flick on Ed McBain's 1959 novel, King's Ransom. And believe us when we tell you that the filmmaker proceeded with High and Low as he simply despised the whole concept of kidnapping and held the heinous act of unlawful confinement right on top of the list of crimes. Shot during the latter half of 1962, the movie which became the highest earning Japanese flick of 1963 revolves around a wealthy executive under verge of signing an important business deal when his driver's son gets abducted and is held for ransom. The executive finds himself in a tight spot because if he pays the ransom, it will cause him to go into debt, and if he uses the money for the deal, the child will be harmed. It is only fitting to address high and low as a pure art form. With different perspectives, we can't help but wonder how can the movie be so effortless and powerful at the same time. Right from the flick's star-studded cast, the organic pacing and the well-orchestrated kidnapping, to the simple but at the same time, exceedingly plotted premise. The entire movie is depicted with a sense of realism and intensity.
Ikiru, 1952. Kurosawa's Ikiru centers on a Tokyo bureaucrat who finds himself diagnosed with the last stage of cancer and has about less than a year to survive. With this bittersweet, soul-crushing drama, Kurosawa delves deeper into the struggles of the protagonist who finds himself at death's door and his final quest for meaning. Backed by a screenplay by Shinobu Hashimoto, Hideo Oguni, and Kurosawa himself, it would be fair to state that Ikiru's screenplay was loosely based on Tolstoy's 1886 masterpiece, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Now, if we take a good look at the themes that the movie has primarily dealt with, there's learning how to live no matter how miserable life can be, there's the crumbling family life of Japan on display, and let's not disregard the inefficiency of bureaucracy topping our list. Ikiru will leave you in tears. <laughs> Dersu Uzawa, 1975. It was in 1973 that Moss Film approached Kurosawa and asked him if he would be interested in working with the Soviet studio. This was precisely when the filmmaker proposed an adaptation of the Russian explorer Vladimir Arsenyev's 1923 memoir Dersu Uzawa, and the rest, as you all know, is history. Kurosawa's Dersu Uzawa happens to be his only 70mm film which was shot almost entirely in the outdoors of the Russian Far East wilderness. With a movie taking a plunge into the relationship that develops between two completely different people, while one of them happens to be a man who is fully immersed into his environment and has made the wilderness his very home, the other finds nature quite alienating and contrasting with the life that he is used to living in the first place. While there is no denying that Kurosawa's Dersu Uzala became a box office hit, the movie also ended up being a recipient of several awards, one of which includes the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. In case we missed out, the movie also won won the Golden Prize at the Night Bosco International Film Festival, amongst other awards. Throne of Blood, 1957. One often wonders why is Kurosawa's Throne of Blood regarded as one of the most celebrated adaptations of Shakespeare's Macbeth? Well, for starters, Kurosawa had always been a fan of this epic tragedy, and he was simply waiting for the right time to make his own adaptation. And then when you have Shakespeare's timeless tale getting infused with Kurosawa's creative direction, the result is bound to be nothing short of spectacular. So instead of medieval Scotland, we have feudal Japan, and the storyline continues to remain the same. The warrior murders his sovereign, influenced by his exceedingly ambitious wife. Backed by a powerful screenplay by Shinobu Hashimoto, Ryuzo Kikushima, Hideo Ogoni, and Kurosawa himself, this 1957 Japanese Jidai Geki film is highly engaging. Throne of Blood scrupulously retains the core elements of the original play, starting from ambition, betrayal, to vengeance. The eerie, thick forest on display is still one of the major highlights of the movie. <coughs> Red Beard, 1965. Based on the 1959 short story collection by Shoguro Yamamoto and add to this some aspects from Fyodor Dostoevsky's 1861 novel, Humiliated and Insulted, Kurosawa's period film takes place in Koishikawa, a district of Edo towards the end of the Tokugawa period and revolves around the relationship between a cranky yet compassionate doctor and his new medical apprentice, who initially happens to be conceited and materialistic, but eventually comes to admire the doctor. Red Beard not only tops the list of Kurosawa's longest movies, but also happens to be the master storyteller's last black and white flick. The movie was screened at the 26th Venice International Film Festival and picked up a Golden Globe nomination for Best Foreign Language Film. Also, in case you did not know, Red Beard became the highest earning Japanese production of 1965 and the third Kurosawa movie to top the highly acclaimed Kinejun yearly critics poll. Yojimbo, 1961. Hands down one of the most popular Akira Kurosawa flicks to have ever been created, Yojimbo revolves around a wily, masterless samurai who strolls into a 19th century town that's being ruled by two conflicting violent factions, only to seize the opportunity and instigate them into destroying each other. The movie was Kurosawa's most prominent commercial hit in Japan and retains its position as an all-time classic today. Boasting a script by Ryuzu Kikushima, Hideo Ogoni and Kurosawa himself, the movie is light on action but heavy on the part of suspense. Yojimbo was both critically and commercially successful in the black comedy that the movie featured influenced Sergio Leone's 1964 spaghetti western flick of Fist Full of Dollars.
Dreams, 1990. There came a time when Kurosawa chose a very different subject for this movie and this was unlike anything he had ever filmed before. We are stressing on the subject of dreams, which brings us to his 1990 magical realist anthology film comprising of eight different vignettes. If we are being honest here, Dreams was actually inspired by Kurosawa's real recurring dreams and each sequence was based on the director's dreams throughout his life. Various dreams have been addressed in this anthology movie here. Some are lighthearted, some are very imaginative, and there are some that are genuinely unsettling. In short, Dreams actually gives us an interesting peek into the brilliant mind of Kurosawa. As for fans of Kurosawa, you will be happy to learn that Steven Spielberg persuaded Warner Brothers to buy the international rights of this movie. Rashomon, 1950. Are you familiar with the saying that every story has three sides? Well, in Rashomon, there are four stories from four different perspectives, based on the short stories In a Grove and Rashomon by Ryonosuke Akutagawa. The 1950 Jedi Geki psychological thriller crime flick here has the wife of a samurai assaulted and the samurai murdered while attempting to protect his wife, or so it seems. Everybody involved is forced to testify before the court, and it is here that the human memory is seen distorting the very objective reality of what actually took place. Rashomon categorically falls under Kurosawa's most imaginative masterworks and won the filmmaker a whole new international audience. From shifting character perspectives to retelling the same story from different points of view, the movie, which became the recipient of an honorary Oscar in 1952, manages to keep the audience at the edge of their seats to date. Sanjuro, 1962. It was the success of Yojimbo that drove Kurosawa to make its sequel, and voila, you have Sanjuro in front of you. While initially the movie was an adaptation of the writer Shoguro Yamamoto's novel Hibiheian, some alterations were made in the script after Yojimbo became a commercial hit in Japan, and the main character Sanjuro was expanded and incorporated here. The film has the titular character aiding a visionary bunch of young warriors in segregating their clan's evil influences. In the process, he himself ends up setting the image of a proper samurai for them. You have no reason not to watch this highly entertaining gem here, especially if you are Team Kurosawa. Unlike its predecessor, Sanjuro is a lot lighter in tone, but that did not stop this movie from surpassing Yojimbo's box office success. It was the second highest earning Japanese production in 1962 and was positively received by critics. Kagemusha, 1980. Set in the Sengoku period, Kagemusha narrates the story of a lower-class criminal who is hired and taught to impersonate a dying medieval Japanese lord of a huge clan in order to prevent the opposing lords from ambushing the newly vulnerable clan. Special mention to celebrated director George Lucas, who was so fascinated by Kurosawa's screenplay and illustrations that he took advantage of his own authority over 20th Century Fox just so he could make the production company distribute Kagemusha. Of course, it goes without saying that Lucas was successful in his endeavor. The movie won a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film and was also awarded the prestigious Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival in 1980. Kinejun even has the flick ranked 59 on the list of the greatest Japanese movies of all time in 2009. The Hidden Fortress, 1958. It is never too late to address yourself as a Kurosawa beginner, and if you call yourself one, then you will have every reason to enjoy The Hidden Fortress. This action-adventure comedy drama revolves around two peasants who are charged with escorting a woman and a man through a dangerous territory across enemy lines, oblivious to the fact that the woman happens to be a medieval princess and the man her loyal general. No wonder George Lucas has referred to The Hidden Fortress as his biggest inspiration when he envisaged the 19th 77 epic space opera movie Star Wars. The 1958 flick, which ended up becoming the fourth highest earning movie in Japan that year, was Kurosawa's first feature film that was extensively shot in a widescreen format. Drunken Angel, 1948. This Japanese Yakuza movie here is most memorable for being the first of the 16 movie collaborations between Kurosawa and the famed Japanese actor and producer Toshiro Mifune. The storyline has an alcoholic doctor, one with an exceedingly hot temper, developing an unlikely bond with a violence-prone gangster suffering from tuberculosis. It is only fitting to address Drunken Angel as a powerhouse of drama, one that is hard-hitting and beautifully constructed. Now, when it comes to the structure of the plot, it is very episodic 
episodic and the movie has things picking up mainly in the second half. The element of music happens to be a constant presence throughout the runtime of 98 minutes, even while introducing the characters. For this, we have Fumio Hayasaka to give full credit to. Also, there's a particular dream sequence in the flick which happens to be a major highlight of Drunken Angel. The Bad Sleepwell 1960 The only thing better than a perfect revenge drama is the great Kurosawa directing one. This movie tells the story of a young man named Mr. Nishi who seeks revenge for the unfortunate suicide of his father because of a corrupt industrialist named Mr. Iwabuchi. With time, Nishi gains access to his company and soon there occurs a series of deaths among the company officials which look uncannily like suicide. A classic twist reveals that there might be more to the conspiracy and the whole thing is orchestrated by Nishi as payback back for his father's death. Although Akira Kurosawa directed the movie, the idea originated with his nephew Mike Y. Inoue. The Bad Sleep Well is often regarded as one of the darkest and most cynical among his works and the narrative is sure to keep you on your toes the whole time. The revenge plan is the heart of the movie and the fluid and vibrant acting performance gives it a believable touch. The master is in control of his craft, which is evident from the thought-provoking shots and well-written script. The noir-like plotline goes well with his stylized execution and this movie is a great reminder that Kurosawa goes much beyond the usual notion of samurai drama. The Lower Depths, 1957. The story is premised in medieval Japan, where an elderly man named Rokube and his wife run a tenant complex on the foothills of a cliff. It is more like a disorganized slum, but tenants are a well-knit community. The movie focuses on the complexities of their daily lives and their occupations. Some of them have professions that force them to indulge the wrong side of the law, but things don't usually affect the equation among them. The narrative captures their emotions, struggles, and eventful lives, as Kurosawa brings you a captivating drama that serves food for your soul. This is exceptional work of art that will impress the viewers with its sheer cinematic brilliance even when the story takes a back seat. The unsentimental telling of the lives of the supposed downtrodden of the society has a delicate touch, and the story is inspired by one of Maxime Gorky's iconic plays. Kurosawa makes great use of multi-camera shooting methods, and his innovative set designs ensure some brilliant visuals. He punctuates the emotional moments with a generous dose of humor, and the diverse range of characters is surprisingly relatable even in the modern context. Do not miss out on this touching comedic tale of life because this underrated Kurosawa classic deserves all the appreciation it can get. Madadayo, 1993. Set in the backdrop of the Second World War, this movie is set towards the latter half of the war as Japan starts to witness signs of defeat. The protagonist is an upbeat professor named Hayakin Uchida, who decides to quit his teaching career to fulfill his aspirations of becoming an author. His students pay their tributes to demand for his dutiful service all these years, and they pay him a visit to offer their respects. The movie captures the mess of war-torn Tokyo, and their students soon realize the true genius and intellect of their beloved professor. Professor. The story highlights the worship of wisdom even in the harshest conditions. This is regarded as Kurosawa's last released movie and it is the perfect conclusion to a thriving career. The director uses a real-life military school teacher as inspiration for the character of the professor and this protagonist is one of the best things about the movie. His views on the world and his words of wisdom are enriched by a terrific script and at times it is hard to tell that the movie was made 30 years ago. Does this qualify as an anti-war drama? Probably not but the general theme spares a few thoughts about the plight of those affected by the great tragedy. The movie is worth watching as a final tribute to the veteran filmmaker because even his last work is just as good as those in his finest moments. <laughs> The Idiot, 1951. Tetsuko Hara portrays the role of Taiko Nasu, the beautiful mistress of Tahara. Based on the director's favorite writer, Fyodor Dostoevsky's 1869 novel, also titled The Idiot, the original version of the movie happens to boast a runtime of 265 minutes. The movie was later imposed with a 100-minute studio-mandated cut, finally making it 166 minutes. The storyline follows Kinji Kameda, a Japanese war veteran who suffers from epileptic dementia, traveling to the snowy 
island of Hokkaido, where he eventually gets entwined in a complicated romantic relationship with his best friend and a disgraced woman. No points for guessing that the disgraced woman happens to be essayed by none other than Setsuko Hara. The heavily edited film version is still widely recognized as one of Kurosawa's least successful works and barely scratches the tip of the plot of Dostoevsky's terrific novel. However, having said that, the movie does carry an irresistible poetry of its own. Kurosawa gives the story a modern spin by moving it from Russia in summer to Hokkaido in winter. <laughs> Do Kaden, 1970. Based on Shigeru Yamamoto's 1962 novel A City Without Seasons, Do Kaden follows a group of homeless people living in poverty on the outskirts of Tokyo. In order to finance the film, one that happened to be Kurosawa's first movie in color, he had to mortgage his house. The goal was to show his audience that he was still capable of functioning quickly and, most importantly, efficiently within a limited budget. However, the flick failed at the box office, earning way less than its budget of 100 million yen. Hence, this left the filmmaker with large deaths at the age of 61. Kurosawa's disappointment eventually ended with him in deep depression, so much so that he actually attempted suicide the following year by slashing his wrists and neck with a razor. Despite being a commercial and critical failure post its initial release, Dodes Kaden became the recipient of the Grand Prix at the Belgian Film Critics Association. Rhapsody in August 1991. Based on Kyoko Murata's novel Nabe no Naka, Rhapsody in August revolves around an aged Hibakusha whose husband died during the 1945 atomic bombing of Nagasaki. She is seen taking care of her four grandchildren over the summer and in due course learns of her long-lost brother residing in Hawaii who yearns to have her sister visit him before he dies. It was while Kurosawa was filming Dreams that he had read Murata's novel and adapted it to a script in just the span of 15 days. The movie stars Richard Gere, who was so excited to be a part of Kurosawa's project that the actor wanted to work free for the director and had even memorized all his dialogues phonetically. Rhapsody in August lets its viewers delve deeper into the bombing tragedy through the eyes of the children, especially through their naive words. Unlike Kurosawa's stylistic masterpieces such as The Seven Samurai or Yujimbo for that matter, this one here is his most humanistic movie and deserves all the love it can get. Stray Dog, 1949. Addressed as a detective movie, Stray Dog was adapted from an unpublished novel by Kurosawa and based on its premise, which is two cops with completely contrasting personalities and motivations paired together, the movie was often considered the progenitor of the contemporary police procedural and buddy cop film genres. The film was Toshiro Mifune in the role of Detective Murakami, who gets his pocket picked on a bus and loses his Colt pistol in the process. Desperate to get his handgun back, Murakami is even seen conducting an investigation into the theft but without success. He's eventually teamed up with veteran detective Sato and together the pair is able to track the gun thief. Stray Dog was Kurosawa's first collaboration with Ryuzo Kikushima who collaborated with him several times before the duo's serious fallout in 1969. One of the high points of this Japanese noir crime drama categorically happens to be this 8-minute wordless sequence that shows Mipune's character going undercover and wandering the streets while looking for the gun thief. Now what's fascinating about this scene is that in reality, the scene featured real documentary footage of a war-ravaged Tokyo neighborhood that was filmed by Kurosawa's friend Ishiro Honda, who later turned out to be the director of the famous 1954 kaiju movie Godzilla. In spite of Stray Dog being celebrated as one of Kurosawa's most critically renowned post-war movies, the director himself thought otherwise. According to Kurosawa, the flick was a bit too technical, but if you ask us, we don't know why we keep returning to this sheer delight with nothing but incredible pleasure. The Quiet Duel, 1949. Set in the backdrop of the World War II, this movie has a young idealistic doctor who, during his service as an army physician, gets infected with syphilis while performing surgery. This naturally has the doctor's life taking a drastic turn as he finds himself struggling with the disease. It is safe to address this notably muted and understated flick here as a heartbreaking story about the inner battle between conscience and desire, and it was primarily Mr. Kurosawa's delicate direction that transformed 
transformed it into such an impressive film. As a co-production of Dai Studios and the then newly formed independent production unit Art Film Association, The Quiet Duel had Kurosawa initially turning to a contemporary play known as The Abortion Doctor by Kazuo Kikuta and then co-writing the screenplay of this movie with his friend Senkichi Taniguchi. If you ask us, we think it was pretty marvelous as the director's part to break his leading actor away from being typecast as a gangster or a samurai for a change. The film is packed with some very well set up scenes and when you have them infused with well compositioned cinematography, the end result is a wave of arresting visuals on display. I Live in Fear 1955 Back in the year 1954, a few nuclear tests carried out in the Pacific led to contaminated rainstorms in Japan, and there was this one particular incident that had a Japanese fishing boat exposed to atomic fallout. And no points for guessing, the result was absolutely devastating. In short, this is how Kurosawa's I Live in Fear originated. Now, when we look at the story, it has this elderly Japanese factory owner both obsessed and scared of even the idea of nuclear exterminations so much so that he becomes hell-bent on having his entire family relocate from Japan to South America, thinking that would be a safe haven. This black-and-white drama flick here marks the last work of Kurosawa's close friend, composer, and collaborator Fumiya Hayasaka, who died during production. Hayasaka's student Masaru Sato later finished the musical score of I Live in Fear. While the flick today is regarded by many as one of the finest films to deal with the psychological effects of a nuclear attack back when it was released, it was the first Kurosawa movie to be a flop at the Japanese box office. We highly recommend that you watch this movie because this underrated gem here really deserves more recognition. Sanshiro Sugata, 1943. Akira Kurosawa claimed to have adapted the novel that his directorial debut is based on in just a single sitting. Sanshiro Sugata, which launched Kurosawa's directing career, has a very basic storyline. We have Sanshiro, a talented but headstrong youth, who comes to the city in order to learn jujutsu, but in the process he comes across a new form of self-defense, which is judo. Well, it is only fitting to address this 1943 Japanese martial arts drama movie here as a prototype for most of Kurosawa's Kurosawa's future flicks. There is no denying that this movie happens to be a worthy production when it comes to the cinematic canon of Kurosawa. It is only fitting to call this movie a masterpiece, one that has been an inspiration for many films, including his very own sequel, released in 1945. Sanshiro Sagata has some outstanding camera work on display. It, as a movie, comprehends human sense, the true meaning of love and compassion, and lastly, it happens to be a remarkable debut of Master Kurosawa. The Men Who Tread on a Tiger's Tail, 1945 Keeping in mind that we wanted to write a screenplay for a movie that would not only be censor-friendly, but also cost him less in terms of production, Kurosawa came up with a 1945 period drama film which was inspired by the kabuki dance drama Kanjincho and the celebrated Japanese no-play Ataka. The film has a Japanese general and his group of loyal men masquerading themselves as monks in order to pass through an enemy checkpoint and outsmart the border guards. It reports are true, the script of this particular movie was supposedly written in just a span of a single day. Also, you will be surprised to learn that the occupying Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers, in short, known as SCAP, had initially banned the men who tread on the tiger's tail due to the flick portraying feudal values. Well, it was after the Treaty of Peace with Japan re-established friendly relations between Japan and the Allied Powers that the movie was released in 1952, hence the tagline, banned for eight years in Japan. This flick was unquestionably Another feather in Kurosawa's cap. Marvelous verdict. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video. This is our list of the top 25 Akira Kurosawa movies that always have us excited. So, which of these among the ones mentioned is your favorite? Share your experience with us in the comment section and stay tuned as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Nani?